Welcome back friends. This is Medical Coding with Blue. I am your host, Blue. So today we are talking about Fracture Diagnosis Coding 101. Um, we are taking an adventure with our fictitious patient today named Janie. And Janie has a wrist fracture. So this video is designed to help coders, but not just coders, providers as well, anybody that's curious about medical coding and what it looks like. So with injury coding, we know that all injury codes begin with the letter S, but it's that seven digit character of A, D, or S that is the question sometimes. So today we're going to take a deeper dive and a closer look at each of those characters. Okay. So let's start off with A, okay? So we know if the seven digit character is A, we know that the patient is in their active phase of treatment. So this is for your initial visits. It also covers, like for example, if the patient comes in for a second visit and let's just say that the bone didn't stay where it was supposed to stay after they were casted, and so the provider has to go in and recast the patient um, to set the bone again. We know that we're gonna use A because the patient is still being actively treated. They are not in the healing phase just yet. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, so if we see that the seven digit character is a D, we know that the patient is in the subsequent phase of their treatment. So when the patient comes in and they're healing nicely and normally and everything is going according to plan, we know that we're going to use the D anytime we are in this 90 days, okay? So any visit in this 90 days is going to end with an A or a D, okay? So, but what happens post 90 days and the patient is still having a problem related to that fracture. Well, that's when the amazing, drum roll please, S for sequela comes in. Now, I like sequela, okay? Because sequela to me is fascinating. And I've covered this in a previous video, but very quickly, uh, sequela covers anything that is related to the injury. So sometimes uh, a patient can develop pain um, even after a fracture has healed. And if that pain is related to that fracture, then you're looking at a sequela situation. And this is anything post 90 days, okay? So when you have uh, a patient who comes in with pain and they say it's related to the fracture, then you're going to code your manifestation, which is the pain followed by the fracture with the seven digit character of S because we'll know that by doing that, that those two are related, okay? Okay, so let's take a deeper look at each one. So let's talk about our fictitious patient, Janie. So Janie is a farm girl and Janie was in the barn. She was shearing the sheep, she got up she slipped and fell and broke her wrist. So she goes and she sees the amazing fictitious doctor, Dr. Q, okay? She says, Dr. Q, my wrist, he, you know, does his x-rays, does his exam, and he finds out, oh, Janie, you fractured yourself. So you have a non-displaced left wrist lunate fracture, and that, code is going to look like this, S62.125, and because this is the first visit with Dr. Q, it's going to end with the seven digit character of A, okay? And this is 90 days, all right? So then we're going to code our external cause code, which is the slip and fall, which is W. 0, 1.190 seventh digit character of A. Okay? And then she was sharing a sheep, so that's Y 
93.K3. And she was in a barn, so that's Y92.71. So barn, shearing, and then the fall, and then the fracture. Okay, so this is what your initial visit codes are going to look like. Okay, it's going to be four codes because this is telling us that she has a fracture, she fell, and she was shearing a sheep, and she was in a barn. Okay, so she's got her wrist set, she's good to go. Okay, so she comes back a couple weeks later for her follow up visit. Okay, so for a follow up visit or her subsequent visit, we're going to take these two out because you don't need the place of occurrence and you don't need the activity. But what it is going to follow is this external cause code. So you notice that W codes will always have this blank seventh digit character. So this means that this is interchangeable. It can go with the injury code, okay? So because this is a normal follow-up, it's going to be a D, okay? Because this is a subsequent visit, okay? So everything else is going great. She's healing, she's doing her physical therapy like she's supposed to. Everything's good, okay? So then we get post 90 days, all right? And Janie did great, okay? She did all her therapy like she's supposed to. She, she rested like she was supposed to. She is post 90 days, all right? She's 100 days past her date of injury and She's done all of her care. So what does the coding look like then, okay? Well, you're not gonna pick up the fracture. If she is post 90 days and she is completely healed and that doctor looks at that x-ray and says, oh, she's healed fine, patient is, you know, doesn't need pain medication or anything like that, you are looking at Z09, which is a follow-up uh, follow-up code, uh, following treatment, completed treatment, and then you're going to use the history of fracture code, which is Z87.81 for the history of fracture, okay? So notice how you don't have the fracture code with it, okay? Like I said, if it is completely healed and it is, you're out of the global, you are going to use the follow-up code because that fracture technically no longer exists. Now they have a history of a fracture, okay? But let's take a look and see what happens when Janie has problems post 90 days, okay? So if she has problems post 90 days, let's just say she hasn't been diagnosed with post-traumatic osteoarthritis just yet. But she comes in at her 100 day appointment and she says, oh doc, you know, my, my wrist still hurts, you know, and he looks at the x-ray and well, she's healed, but she's having pain now. And he says, oh, well, that pain's related to her wrist fracture. So this is what it's gonna look like. So just for the pain, it's gonna be M25.53. Along with the fracture code, which is S62.125, S, and then the fall code, which is W01.190, S. So this is telling us that she's got pain in her left wrist, she's got a fracture, and this is how it happened. And with that seventh digit character of S, we know that she, this is a sequela situation, okay? But let's just say, for example, that she gets diagnosed with post-traumatic osteoarthritis. How does it look then? So post-traumatic osteoarthritis is going to look like this. M19.132. Notice that I didn't use the pain code. I took the pain code completely away because we know that post-traumatic osteoarthritis and pain go hand in hand. 
So if you have a definitive diagnosis, you can go ahead and put it with the sequela of the injury, which is the post-traumatic osteoarthritis. Okay? Easy enough, right? <laughs> so that covers that. All right. So where are we? I, t I did notes um, because I want to make sure that I touch on every single thing. So just to reiterate, whenever you're doing fracture diagnosis coding and any kind of fracture documentation, you want to make sure you put how the patient got their injury, when, as far as like a date, and then you want to put like where, like where were they, you know, what were they doing. Um, sometimes if they're in an auto accident and they're not like in the local area, you can also put where they were as well. So you want to make sure that all of this documentation is there and gets carried through out your um, time with this patient. The reason that coders always harp on detail is because, not because we try to make providers do more work, but it's because we're all human and it's next to impossible to always remember details about a patient. So the more detail you have in their notes, the better it is for yourself, the better it is for your patient. Because at the end of the day, you, you never wanna miss a detail. And for us as coders, the only thing that we know about what goes on in your visit with this patient is by what you document. Because I'm, as I'm sure you've heard, if it's not documented, it didn't happen. Because we don't know unless you're telling us that you did this or you did that, you know, we don't know what's going on with that patient. So the only thing that we can do to help you and pick up anything that you document is if you document it. So um, I hope that this video has been helpful. I try not to make these videos too long because sometimes it's hard to um, make sure to grasp everything and I like to do it in little bites because it's easier to retain that way okay so if you have enjoyed this video uh, please let me know if you have any questions or if you have a suggestion for another video I am going to be shooting more um, I have been a little bit busy lately but um, I'm going to be making more time for these videos because they are important and I love sharing information about coding so um, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. All right, bye.